Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Thanks for tuning in. As you guys all know, I got the privilege to race the Zwift World Championships last weekend, and I thought I'd just do a quick follow-up video to let you guys know how the day went. So without further ado, let's take a look at how things went. So since this was a virtual event, there was a couple verification processes that had to take place just to make sure it was a level playing field. So the first one is the height verification video. And I live by myself. You, you, you think the height verification video is pretty simple, but it's comedically hard when you're living by yourself and you have to film yourself, measuring yourself, and also have your whole body in shot. It's, it's a lot more complicated than it seems, trust me. I did the height verification video first thing in the morning and once I was happy with the video I filmed, it took a couple takes. I went and did an easy ride just to warm up my legs, wake them up, and make sure everything was working properly. And then I did like one two minute effort at around 80% and the whole ride was 30 minutes. Right after I did the ride, I did my weigh-in video. So this is an important thing to know is doing the ride before is important because you want to lose a bit of water weight so you can weigh in low. And also, you don't want to be eating a lot before you do the weigh-in video. Since the weigh-in video has to be recorded two hours before the event, there is a bit of a time window where you can get yourself really light and then actually before the event takes place, you go and you just um, drink some water, drink some Gatorade, and eat a bit of food so you're feeling good again before the event in that two-hour window. People may not talk about it, but I can assure you there was a lot of um, national jerseys around me in the B Pace Partner ride, so I, I can only assume that's what they were doing. So weight management is an important part in these events. Normally I weigh in around just under 68 kilos, and actually a month before the event I was pretty heavy at 69 kilos, because like it was right after Christmas. And doing like these little weight management tricks, I weighed in at 66.6 .6 kilos, a, a spooky number. So it's important to be mindful of what you eat before this. Um, if you have too many carbs or too much salt in your diet beforehand, it helps you retain water, which in turn makes you heavy. But at the same time, you, want, you don't want to cut carbs out completely because you want your, your muscles to have glycogen in them so you can do the effort still. Uh, so it's all about striking a balance, essentially. And these things I wouldn't recommend doing in the long term because they're not sustainable at all. I only do them, well, I only ever do them for big events, and this is the first time I've actually done it. So once I did submit the weigh-in video, I drank a bottle of Gatorade and had a couple slices of pizza. Not too much, I didn't want to feel full and bloated, but enough that I wasn't feeling hungry. And then I just prepared my race nutrition, so I had two bottles of Gatorade um, and a pack of candies, and that's what I would be eating throughout the race. And then I got into the starting pens and got ready to actually race, paired up all the devices, made sure they were reading properly, all that fun stuff. For the actual race, um, it's no surprise, the Canadian tactics, we had Tom as our leader and Noah and I, our job was protecting Tom and making sure he got to the base of the last KOM in the main group, in the front group. And then we had Leandre and Chris, who were going to be trying to get into breakaways if any breakaway was established. And as it happens, Leandre did get into a breakaway, the main breakaway of the day, and they, they got up to, I think, 15 second gap. And then at the base of the climb, they were down to 10 seconds. Um, but at the base of the last climb, since uh, my job was done, I sat up and fan viewed Tom and gave him some cheering. I figured it's better for me to fan view him and cheer him on rather than use my energy to try and scrape like a 30th place or something. Um, so Tom ended up in 8th place, I ended up in 60th place, but both results that we can be proud of, so I, I'm really happy with that. And as you guys know, I was really nervous about going into this race, getting dropped on like the first climb and having to ride the rest of the course by myself. That didn't happen, and I'm even happy to say that I wasn't it was hard, but I wasn't on my very, very limit on the climbs, and I was even in like mid-pack, so I, I had some wiggle room there. I think one thing that did help was we were all on standardized equipment, so we were all riding the Wahoo Kicker cores, and I think maybe the equipment I normally have is a bit less generous than the Wahoo Kicker core, and maybe some other people's equipment is more generous than the Wahoo Kicker core. So it ended up working out for me. 
before I end this video, I just wanted to go over a quick story about my origins in cycling. When I was younger, I had a dream that I would be part of the under-23 team, like the Canadian team, and go off racing um, with a Canadian jersey. And really, it was my ultimate goal to earn like the Canadian jersey or get given a Canadian jersey. I didn't want to go to the shop and buy one. It's, it's not the same. Um, so time went on. I was I was naive, and as as I got more into cycling, I realized the just the level you have to be at to get selected for a national level team. And it was apparent that I I just wasn't at that level. So I aged out of the under twenty three category. But then this Zwift event came up, and they had a whole selection process, and it gave me uh, another chance to achieve this dream of getting a Canadian jersey. So I did the continental qualifiers and. On my screen, as I crossed the line, I was fifth, so I was qualifying, but then the results came up and I was actually seventh, so I didn't qualify, which was a major bummer. Then the Canadians had their own separate qualifying events. So on the first qualifying event, I actually won it, but since I didn't have a UCI license, I wasn't eligible for a selection. So it was pretty heartbreaking when I was told that I wasn't going to be chosen. So, to remedy the issue, I bought a UCI license just for, like, this was at the end of 2021, so it would expire within, like, 15 days or something, and I raced the second qualifier event, and in the second qualifier event, I ended up making the cut and getting chosen, and after getting chosen and getting the jersey in the, ma in the mail, it really felt like it was a dream come true to finally um, earn this jersey and be riding for a Canadian team. Even though I know Zwift is still like a niche thing and it's not the same as like being out on the road, um, to me it's, it's still like an accomplishment and something I'm really happy about. Anyways, thanks guys for watching. If you like this content, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you guys have anything you want to say about how the Zwift World Championships was won, what the viewing experience was like, leave a comment down below. I'm like pretty excited to know what you guys thought of the event, especially if you're not normally watching Zwift events. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Hopefully the weather warms up soon and I'll be out on the road, out on the gravel doing some adventure riding again. See ya.